Hi, good afternoon and welcome. We are here in studio. We're going to talk some sports with Val. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And yes, it is Thursday. We're going to be hitting this on Thursday for uh, the rest of December, well, November and December. So uh, we'll be doing the show a day early here for a few weeks. But uh, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. How was yours, Val? Had a really good time. Uh, it was nice. Leave, leave the cooking up to mom. Yeah. That's, that's, it usually goes well when that happens. <laughs> it always goes a lot better, doesn't it? So I uh, got to visit with some family. We had a little bit of a sickness going through, so we were not able to uh, get our family time, but we'll get that coming up here soon. So, well, we got a lot to talk about as we were obviously off last Friday and um, not a ton of stuff going on, but yet yeah, quite a bit of stuff going on. Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, uh, the boys' basketball season, we've had some interesting results already. Mm -hmm. And then on the uh, some teams take already kind of looking a little different from the way they did last year. In fact, some teams already looking different from the way they did last week. Right. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of things happening as far as, um, you know, we got some tournament stuff to talk about, the Cass County tournament's going on. Um, you know, Rochester was at Culver for their opener for the boys' basketball. Let's, let's go ahead and just get right into that there. Let's head up to John R. Nelson Gymnasium here for the Rochester Zebras and the Culver Cavaliers opening up there the Wednesday before Thanksgiving like they always do. And Jim, I just got to say, the gym looks beautiful. I've, I've been able to be up there a few times already, but it just uh, amazes me, you know, the, the changes with the gym and the floor and the bleachers. And I haven't got a chance to see the locker rooms. I heard they were pretty nice as well. Yeah, they, yeah uh, they're much larger. Uh, I was able to, I didn't go inside the locker room, but I kind of went inside the hallway. It's, yeah, it's definitely a lot bigger. And Zebras get on the board right out of the gate with a nice pass from Reinhardt's 10 to Bogger. And uh, Zebras looking really good in the opener. Right. I mean, Rochester was really looking up ahead to pass, um, looking to get their transition game going. It's, you know, we, we talked, we joked about it. It's kind of like a Super Bowl party where there are a lot of wings, but you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how it's gonna how it's gonna taste, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it's definitely you know you know one thing Coach Malco talked about was, and there you see the three pointer at the first quarter buzzer by Tanner Reiner to give Rochester a seven point lead. But everybody can handle it. Obviously, some better, like Coach Malco said, some better than others. But everybody can at least put the ball on the floor a little bit. Yeah, and that helps a lot with your fast break. But it, you know it was only twenty to sixteen about halfway through the second quarter. This was right around when David Height picked up his third foul for Culver, and Rochester outscored Culver the rest of the half, 19-3. to Yeah, Culver was struggling when Height went off the floor. No Jack Rogers in that game, so, uh, you know, they they were looking for other ways to get scoring. And uh, for an exchange student, uh, Gosp? Gosp. Gosp? Yeah. Uh, he was holding them in there. He was shooting well from outside the arc, mm -hmm. but... Uh, Zebra's starting to pull right away here in the uh, second. I, I was a little bit surprised that Rochester was playing zone against Culver because Gwasp was just kind of finding the little seams in the zone and and just firing away. Caudill hit a three there from the baseline. Yeah, and Logan Caud Logan Caudill was yeah. uh, talking with Coach uh, Evans. He was he thought Caudill was the highlight of the night. Yeah, I mean he just played he played so hard. I mean he played till the really till he was exhausted out there. I mean he just and he could even hit a three. Which I didn't know he could, and I mean he's six three, so he can kind of bang around inside too. So he's got a nice skill set for them. But Rochester, I mean they, you know they went on another big long run at the end of the third quarter to go up by thirty. Jack Reffitt had a couple of threes. He looked good, you know, coming yeah. up from the JV from last year. And Rochester uh, had twenty one bench points in this game. Six for Reffitt, six from Carson Pollock too. I, I think and Carson Pollock has made a step forward as a basketball player yeah. as well. I think everybody everybody scored except for one player. I think was that right for Rochester? Yeah. Uh, oh boy, you, you got me on the spot here. Yeah, uh, 12, twelve different players, thirteen played, twelve scored. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a lot of uh, a lot of points to go around for the Zebras, and you know they did something they weren't able to do all the last season. They put seventy points on the board. Yeah, seventy. Yeah, I think their season high last year was something like sixty. Was it sixty four? Then then scored seventy in a regulation game since that crazy Manchester game two years ago when Brock Bowers went wild in the fourth quarter. They won that one seventy four seventy two. But yeah, it's 
Yeah, almost. Yes, yeah, January of 2022, I think was the last time they'd scored 70 in a game. So, uh, but I mean, it, it was 70, but it didn't look like it was like they really had to strain themselves to score mm-hmm. 70. They looked comfortable doing it, and I mean, they they did taking good shots. It yes. wasn't just a hot shooting night. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it was 19 for you know uh, Drew Bowers, which was a career high. 13 for Tanner Reinerts and 12 for Owen Prater. And Owen has really. I was really, I mean, I was impressed by a lot of guys. I, I was really impressed by Owen, too. He looked like he's worked a lot on his shot, mm-hmm. and he just looks a lot more comfortable with the ball in his hands. He, Yeah, he did. I, I think in that comfort level made him look a little bit more in control. Mm-hmm. You know, at times there last year, and I think Coach Malco would agree, that there was times where he was maybe a little bit out of control, and uh, I'm sure Owen would even agree with that. But mm-hmm. uh, he did. He looked very in control of, of his game, and, uh, yeah, I think he's got a lot to add to this team this year. Right, and um, the sophomore—I think just the, the whole like just sophomore class. Oh yeah, just looked. I mean, I mean, obviously they they, they showed a lot of promise last year as mm-hmm. freshmen, mm-hmm. and I think they've all taken a step forward this year yeah. as sophomores. Yeah, I mean, Grant Clark is going to help this team. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, he's going to be—he's going to be hard to keep off the floor. Yeah, ref it as well. I mean, uh-huh. we watched a lot of those. You know, Pollock. I mean. We watched a lot of those kids last year on the JV a lot, and you know they had a great JV season last year. Right. I think Jonas Kaiser can help. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, Boggers. Uh, he may not be a sophomore, but uh, he's he's looks really good as well. Right. He was in a little bit of foul trouble, um, so he maybe didn't get as much playing time. But yeah, he's going to help out too. Yeah. And I think Dylan Hook. I mean, uh, you know, again, people are going to look at his free throw shooting. That that wasn't great, but everything else, I think, is really good. And I think he's going to be his athleticism. He's going to be. A, he can really help defensively. Yeah. Well, I think like Coach Malco said, they'll get that fixed. Yeah. They'll get that fixed. I'm sure that he will make sure that it's fixed. Mm-hmm. So, um, big one coming up tomorrow night as they host the 2-0 and Winnemac Warriors. Uh, we'll talk more about Winnemac later, but, um, you know, Winnemac coming in undefeated uh, should be a good one. Right. You know, and I was looking back at kind of the, the you know, the, covering these Rochester Winnemac games since I've been – I've been covering them so what 19 years now, and it's it always seems like when one team is good, the other team's been struggling, mm-hmm. and then it flip flops. And then when you know when Kyle Johnson kind of took over, then Winnemac went up, and then Rochester struggled for a few years. This is the this might be the best Rochester Winnemac game, or the most anticipated Rochester Winnemac game we've had in a long time. Yeah, because both teams are really feeling good about themselves, and they should be. Um, uh, and the, the matchups in this game are going to be really interesting too, because neither team has what you would maybe call a true center, mm-hmm. but just a lot of athleticism on the court for both for both sides in this right, game. Right. And I, I'm I'm really curious about how it how it turns out. Yeah, a lot of kids in that six foot to six two, six three range, and very uh, capable, like you said about Rochester, very capable of handling the ball and and doing different things. Right. Right. And I don't know. You know, will either team want to press the other? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it'd be risky. I mm-hmm. mean, with the way with the way Drew Bowers looked, I mean, it would be risky to press Rochester. Mm-hmm. But it would be the way Brendan Hines has been playing for Winnemac. I think it would be risky if Coach Malco tried to to pressure Winnemac. So, how do you how do you defend these guys? And you know, Co- needless to say, Coach Malco he's been he's aware of he's he's aware of that Winnemac's been playing well. He was, yeah. In fact, he was he was made aware before the season that Winnemac was feeling optimistic. So well, there's a couple mm-hmm. of uh, <laughs> he's people a, with the same last name on the Winnemac team yeah, as well. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, there's been a ton of uh, Malcos, and and there's two of them right now that are playing very well for the Winnemac Warriors. Right, right. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, it's always it's always an interesting mix and in rivalry when you know Winnemac and Rochester play. So. Looking forward to that. We'll have that one on Channel 4 and uh, also with Randy and Val there uh, tomorrow evening from Rochester High School. Mm-hmm. Uh, the girls, uh, 4 and 5, they are, they are 2 and 0 in conference play. A uh, pair of wins sandwiching the two losses for the uh, Lady Zebras. That big win at McConaughey on the road in a conference game, winning 41 40. Followed that up with that loss at Valley, 16 to 42. The one that uh, you know, Coach, um, you know, Burris is probably going to wish that he could redo. Obviously, is that Winnemac game, losing thirty-three to forty-three, um, and the, and then the uh, win last night at Culver. So we have some highlights here of that Winnemac game. So uh, let's talk about that one here. Okay. 
you know, you just got to give props to Coach Stasiak. I mean, Winnemac uh, has six wins now after the win last night uh, against West Central, and you know, only four wins all of last season. And you know, they they've got some uh, some really good pieces in the senior class, obviously with with Piper Link, and but uh, you know, the the freshman Sadie Popejoy has been a, a really big surprise for them as well, but. Right, the first quarter was uh, kind of a, a low-scoring, tight kind of defensive struggle. Um, I think Winnemac got off to like an what eight to three start. It was eight to seven after one quarter. You know, Riley Clevenger's been driving the ball to the basket a little bit, yeah. uh, and uh, was at uh, Aubrey Wilson. I think she's been able to drive the ball to the basket too. But eight to seven after one quarter. Then the second quarter, that was well, it was a great quarter for Rochester, but in the end. Uh, that was yeah. That was a nice looking drive there, a little floater from Riley. Yeah, but uh, again, it was kind of tinged with regret because Rochester, you know, they got it. You know, Wilson hits the pull up there. They're up seventeen to ten. But I thought this was the, one of the biggest plays of the game—a three pointer by Corinne Ulrich. Yeah, who was I didn't know she was known. She could shoot that shot, but boy, that was a good looking three. And it got it to seventeen thirteen. And then again, all this time, Maggie Smith. Um, Candace Croft and Marissa Iverson were all in foul trouble. Yeah, this was basically the the backups for Winnemac, and they were able to hang in. They got it down to twenty to sixteen at halftime, and that was a that was a unit that had not a, a quintet that had not played together this year. Right. And then in the third quarter, Winnemac goes on a fourteen to one run. I think Coach Chaziak kind of rolled the dice there. I mean, you know, when you get a girl that picks up two fouls that early. And you put them on the bench that long, you're kind of, are we going to be in a bad spot when we get back into the third quarter? And the the backups did a really good job for Winnemac and kept them close. And right. here you can see in the third quarter, the the starters back in, the foul trouble is not as much of an issue at this point. Right, and, and he felt like, and then he felt like we started to wear down Rochester because yeah. we now had more depth and foul trouble wasn't an issue for us. Again, the, that was a big three pointer by Clevenger. Got it on thirty to twenty six. And then this is a really nice. It looked like Winnemac tried like a run and jump or kind of like a little trap play. Yeah, great ball movement. And great there. ball movement by Rochester. They broke that down easily. Great pass by McCarter to field for a, a layup. And then that was like 12 seconds later. Nice screen by Piper Link to set up Pope Joy, and she hits the three, and that puts Winnemac up 33 30. And, and that was not an open three either. You're right. It wasn't an easy <laughs> shot. Yeah. But she took it confidently. And Winnemac's last 10, I mean, a 33 30, Winnemac's last 10 points of the game came on free throws. Um, Link and uh, Croft were, I think, ten for twelve in the fourth quarter. So that's that's how you get it done late. And Winnemac went on to win forty-three to thirty-three. So they Winnemac had a seven-point lead. Rochester came back and tied it, and then Winnemac outscored Rochester with thirteen to three over the last uh, what, three and a half, uh, three forty-five, something like that. So again, a great job by Winnemac, and Winnemac also did a great job rebounding in this game. I mean, Link, we had her with nine rebounds in the second half alone. I mean, it just seemed like they got every big offensive rebound they needed. Mm -hmm. That's a tough one, too, playing on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I mean, you don't really have a whole lot of practice time and, um, you know, pretty busy schedule for the Zebras. So they had to come in and uh, prep for a, a very good Winnemac team with not a whole lot of time. And, um, you know, I. You, you got to give it to the Warriors. I mean, they're they're just they're putting some pieces together and they're having a really good season. Right. I mean, Piper Link just played awesome. I, mm -hmm. think, I think fourteen points, and it just seemed like every, she was there at every for every loose ball. Yeah. And uh, I think I think their pressure also had an impact on Rochester. I mean, Rochester had twenty one turnovers in that game, and it was interesting what Coach uh, Burris talked about. It wasn't a lot of it was just getting the ball in bounds. Once he was like, once we got the ball in bounds, we were fine, but. We didn't do that enough. I mean, there was just a lot of, you know, they would inbounds the ball and a, a player would be in a, in a bad spot. I think there were a couple, three, five second calls because mm -hmm. they couldn't get the ball inbounds. So, yeah, Winnemac's pressure was really good. I mean, they, I mean, they, Winnemac is just, uh, you know, again, the only argument you can have about Winnemac is are they better offensively than, than they were last year or are they better defensively? I mean, they're just better in. I think Every the, area of the game. I think the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah yes and yes and yes. And yeah, I mean. Um, you, you talked about it on the air. You know, you talk about signature wins. Obviously, the Winnemac Warriors going on the road and winning at Argus, that was a big signature win for right. them. And then 
going on the road and winning at, at Rochester. I mean, that's uh, a couple of really nice feathers in the cap of the Warriors early in the season. So Right. Uh, the, the Zebras trying to get back on the winning track went up to... I want to give a shout-out to Ella McCarter with 13 points for yeah. Rochester. Yeah, great game for her. and uh, So the uh, the Zebras trying to get back on the winning track here as we get back into the... I don't know, consider it the new year, but it seems like after you get out of that Thanksgiving holiday <laughs> here, that's when the, the heart of the girls' basketball season really takes hold. And uh, they were at the... Uh, Culver Cavaliers at uh, John R. Nelson last well, the night. Fir- well, the first five seconds of the game did not go very well. It's a layup for Alexa O'Brien. But you know what? That turned out to be Culver's only two points in the paint the entire game. Culver playing without senior Grace Sieber last night, so uh, a little yeah. shorthanded there. Yeah, Grace had emergency wisdom tooth surgery. Oh, I heard it was wisdom teeth. I, I was like, well, they yeah. probably wouldn't have scheduled that. And so, it, yeah, it was yeah, it was emergency. So, yeah. and it, after that, after that, you, it's basically no physical activity for seventy two hours. Yeah. So, and then uh, Rochester, they, they, they were down four to two, and then they went on a twenty to twenty zero run to go up twenty two to four. And Jaden Field was really strong in this game. She was really aggressive. Mm-hmm. This was as aggressive a Jaden Field as we had seen. She wound up leading Rochester with ten. And, you know, I mean, on the catch, she was looking to score every time. And that's, I mean, it was really a nice thing to see. And then because if you've got to worry about Jade and then there's so much else you have to worry about, I think that was what, Audrey Bollinger? Yeah. With a nice little kind of like drop step move. Yeah, and put it on the ground and finished at the rim. Yeah, Audrey had six. And, you know, it was interesting because I was talking with Tony Stasiak for the Winnipeg game, and he was like, oh, Audrey Bollinger, she's going to really improve as the season goes on. And Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting that, that she stood out uh, to him as well. And, yeah, I think we saw that with Audrey last night. I mean, she just keeps playing better and better. Really balanced scoring for Rochester. Field had 10. Wilson had 9. Uh, was it McCarter who had 9? And Mia Hadishel had 7. Yeah, every everybody scored too, right? All, all seven all players seven scored. All seven players scored, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, you know, Braylon Hunter is a girl who, I don't know if we've talked about her that much, but she's she's really going to be a problem on the defensive end. Mm-hmm. You put her on the top of that zone, and she's got long arms, and she really moves her feet well. She's a good yeah. athlete. Um, and, 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 again, the offensive game will come eventually here, but I, I think Braylon's going to be a good player in time as well. You know, I've had several people talking to me like, oh, what's going on with Rochester? they only got seven girls. You know, what's... I said I'd take that seven and play anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've got a great seven, and, you know, the numbers will come. They're they're looking you know better for next year, but I would take those seven girls and play with anybody. I yeah. mean, it's a great group. So yeah. Um, so Rochester won forty five to fifteen last night, and uh, the fifteen points are the fewest that Rochester has allowed since Joel Burris has been the coach. Yeah. And but again, it was a shorthanded Culver team that committed twenty seven turnovers. Uh, I think uh, was it. Uh, uh, you know, Maddie Hamilton was kind of running the point a little bit last night, yeah. but. Again, they were just struggling to kind of get into their offense. And then on top of that, they had all kinds of foul trouble. Brooke Davis and Amaya Williams both picked up their fourth foul in the first half. Oh, boy. So it could, uh, so they were they were kind of rolled the dice. And on top of that, Amaya has been dealing with kind of a shoulder mm-hmm. issue. You could tell she was kind of flexing her shoulder. And she's she's not a I, – I wouldn't want to – I mean, I'm just saying she's – I wouldn't want to guess the percentage, but she's – I'll just say she's playing at less than 100%. Yeah. And, you know, I'm – Amaya, when they put her at the high post in a, in a zone, and she's really effective because Amaya's actually a really good passer mm-hmm. out of that high post. But once she was in foul trouble, that caused problems. She, Amaya wound up fouling out with about four minutes to go in the third quarter. Mm. Wow. Um, so that was um, an, an issue. But, um, yeah, but again, not having Grace Sieber, that's just it's such a big deal. Yeah, not only your leading scorer, but obviously your point guard. So that, yeah. that makes a big uh, difference there. So right. The Zebras have a uh, big conference game coming up here on Saturday as the Southwood Knights come to town, and uh, we don't know a whole lot about Southwood. They they're one and one coming into this game, but you know they just getting their season started, obviously with the success that they had winning the state championship in volleyball. Right, right. I mean you look at their two losses, or actually well, they're one and two. They they're lost to the Eastbrook now? last night. Okay, but their two losses are Oak Hill and Eastbrook. You don't have to apologize for either of those losses. Mm-hmm. I mean those are two teams that are really good every year. So. Yeah, but again, it's hard to know. They won state in volleyball. Well, I don't know how many of their 
their players. But I mean, the Hopper girl graduated last right. year, so there was going to be a little bit of I don't know rebuilding. This would be a little bit of a rebuilding year almost anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll see. Again, they had a great year last year. They went sectional. Coach Norman has done a great job there. Uh, but again, I, I um, they were really guard oriented last year. I you know uh, we'll see if they can handle field and bowling or down low. I think that's going to be big. And mm-hmm. and what kind of defense does Coach Norman go with? Does, again, because he might be so small that you might have to go zone, but if you go zone, then that's when maybe Riley Clevenger and Ella McCarter and, and the other, you know, uh, Aubrey Wilson shoot from the outside. Yeah. And we'll talk more about this one next week, but uh, a big one coming up for the uh, Zebras is the Dragons come to town next week. That'll be a... That'll be an interesting matchup, obviously. Right. Sam Redinger just uh, having a tremendous season, scoring around 32 a game average. Yeah. So. Yeah, she's uh, got to be among the state leaders in scoring. I think she scored over like 239 points already this season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Crazy. So we'll see how she does against a Rochester defense that just keeps getting a little bit better and better. Right. That's the that's the thing. That zone is going to present some problems to the Dragons. That'll be an interesting how uh, Coach Jennings and – Coach Burris, you know, match up with this. Yeah. The the you know, Rochester defense against uh, Sam Redinger. So. Yeah. Um, how about the wrestling? Uh, they got underway and uh, they had a, a home match um, this week. And... Right, they're up to a three and zero record in duels. Uh, they beat. Um, they won at Manchester forty nine twenty one in their season opener. I think that was the Friday two weeks ago uh, since we last did the show, and then they won over. Uh, Northfield 48-18 last Tuesday, and then last night uh, they beat Wabash 48-28 in a home duel at Rochester. Um, The winners included um, Grant Holloway at 106. I think it was the first time Grant had actually stepped onto the mat. The first two matches have been forfeit wins for Mm -hmm. Grant, so a very impressive start to his high school career. Lane Horn got a pin at 126. Brantlin Brady at 132. Mason Ramsey got a pin at 144. Good to see Mason get a win. He had been 0-2, had faced two tough opponents. And same with Ethan Amasquita at 157. Ethan had lost his first two. You know, he had had a tough match at Manchester. He was up 5-0 and then lost by fall. You know, good for Ethan to bounce back and get a win. And then some guy named Brady Beck won at heavyweight. Hmm. In new, my, new kid on the team? Yeah, like it took him less than a minute. So those were the six pins, and then there were two other forfeit wins. Uh, Brant Beck and Alex Deming won by forfeit last mm-hmm. night, so that's how the 48 points. And four girls winners last night, Keaton Doran, excuse me, Kyra Doran, Kyra, mm-hmm. younger sister, Kyra, uh, McKenna McKee, of course her older brother's Gavin McKee, mm-hmm. who graduated last year, was a really good wrestler. Lane Pepler uh, won by fall, and Naven Goodman won by fall last night. So Good. Yeah, so we want to keep tabs on the girls. The girls have a big uh, big meet at Maconaqua this Saturday. Okay. And the boys have a big Super Duels meet at Plymouth on Saturday. Hmm. And we don't know exactly who everybody there, who Rochester are going to wrestle, but we know Mr. Walk is going to be there. So this is going to be a pretty big tournament. We know Plymouth is going to be good, too. So mm-hmm. this is going to be kind of the first look at... Some of the kids you'll be facing at sectional and regional. Right, the new format. And maybe the new direction. State. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, talking about the girls' teams, so obviously it's becoming more and more popular as the years go on with the uh, girls' wrestling. How how does the TRC look as far as girls' programs? Is there a I, lot of them I'm now? impressed. North Miami's got a pretty big program. Yeah. Um, in addition to Rochester, Wabash has got a few gr- tough girls. I mean, the girl, I mean, Grace Hiram's lost. You know, Grace is a state-ranked wrestler at 155, but she lost to the the win at the Wabash girls really good, too. Um, Northfield has some quality kids. Um, I think Manchester has a couple girls. So Starting to catch on starting throughout to, the conference. Starting to catch on a little yeah. bit, yeah. And, I mean, they're going to have a whole big girls tournament at McConaughey. I don't know a whole lot about the McConaughey team, but I know Peru's got a pretty big uh, group of girls. Good. So, yeah. Um, you know, and it's interesting because the – the schools that have good girls wrestling teams are also the schools that have good boys wrestling teams. Right, right. It's you kind know. of a program thing. Meanwhile, yeah. you know, Wh- Whitco is struggling to get their girls program going, but they're also struggling to get a, a, a boys program going. So. Right. No, it's just it's great to see. I know uh, Rochester has, what, like nine girls? There? Right, nine, yeah. Yeah, so. And it, it's interesting to watch these freshmen, but the freshmen are just so. And it was interesting because Kyra Doran, I mean, she was mostly like a, like a cheerleader uh-huh. in the past, but she said she wanted to give it a shot, and she's 
you can just tell she's just really athletic kid who's, I mean, uh, it's going to be fun to watch her. Same with McKenna McKee. I mean, you know, we saw McKenna on the volleyball court, you know, playing mostly JV. But, I mean, yeah, these girls are athletic. Lexi Hawes is another girl who's, I mean, they're they're tough. And, look, you know, Lakota Clevenger, she's a good kid, too. Uh-huh. And, uh, Lane Pepler, she does the, uh, she's the one girl who lifts weights in the mornings with the boys. Yeah. Yeah, L- Lane's like, even the other girls would agree that Lane is the hardest working girl on the team. Yeah. And she's only a sophomore, and she's only in, this, in her second year as a wrestler. Really? But she just loves it. I mean, just, she, she lifts weights with the boys in the mornings, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's a fun team to watch, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's really neat. Of course, neat. L- Lily Gerald won the, uh. Won the Rochester invite. I think yeah. I wrote up wrote, wrote about her. I mean, she's you know she had that jujitsu background, and now she's yeah. so that was kind of a that's kind of a gateway into wrestling. Uh-huh. And I mean, she just you could just tell she just loves it. Yeah, yeah, that's neat to see that taken off. And uh, it's it, I know it's been classified as an emerging sport. Is it a full blown uh, sport in the IHSA yet? Not yet, but most people are expecting it in the next year or two. Yeah, yeah. So they'll have a. Postseason tournament that's officially sanctioned. At right, that point. right, right, right. Yeah. The only, the only, yeah. Uh, what, what? Hopefully, we can have is you know we're, we can have like dual meets. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just can't have it. It's just hard to have a dual meet yet. Mm-hmm. And also, how do how will the weight classes work in girls wrestling? Mm-hmm. Because you, you know, there's there aren't any. Obviously, it's spread out between 106 and 285 for boys. It's not as wide of a range for girls. And what, the, what they did at Rochester, for example, is they had, you know, like a 145A and a 145B. I mean, there were so many 145-pound wrestlers. That yeah. They basically had two different brackets. Yeah. And whoever won the 145A wrestled the 145B and the 145-pound championship match. Right, right. So it's how, I mean, uh, how, will the, how, will, how will they do that moving mm-hmm. forward? Right. Because right? uh, you, you, obviously, I mean, weight... Cutting, having young people, having teenagers cut weight is a sensitive issue, and it's especially a sensitive issue with with girls. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, how will the, how will that work out? Because you want, and also you want girls, to, you want girls to get on the mat. Yeah, I mean, you want them to be able to participate. But if you have you know five girls at the same weight, and that's kind of the way it is with girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, those log jams. Yeah, yeah. 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 How about the swimmers? Uh, swimmers uh, uh, swam against Lewis Cass. On Tuesday night, and the uh, girls lost 144 to 37. The boys lost a tight one, 87 85. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, you know, talking to some of the boys afterwards, they were just kind of kicking themselves because you know, one place here and one place there, that's usually a two point or a four point swing, and then mm-hmm. we win. But uh, having said that, the boys' team is. Uh, really good. I mean, I, I think that. I mean, it, it took a very good effort by Lewis Cass to win. I mean, uh, Jake Cipher ha- is swimming great. I mean, and, and you know, Jake is somebody you can you he'll swim whatever you ask him to, and he'll do well at it. But I mean, kids like Reese Johnson, um, you know, Wes Steininger, um, you know, obviously Jake and Wes being kind of the two seniors are kind of the leaders on the team. But um, you know, some you know. A, Lane Shank is a senior too. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, there, you know, they, there aren't many holes in the lineup. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, you know, there are just a lot of good kids on this team, and uh, you know, I, I'm curious to see how they go. You know, the 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 400 freestyle relay team is has a lot of potential. I think they swam three three forty five. I mean, that's a really good time for this time of year. That's going to get down again. All these times go down mm-hmm. once you, you know, once you get to the end of the season. I mean, it's all it's all about, you know, uh, tapering and getting. I mean, they're, they're going to get into the three thirties by the end of the year. Maybe even a, maybe even in the low three thirties. So uh, this team's got a lot of potential to it, and and it's uh, it's it's a good team so far. Uh, uh, Spencer Backus is healthy too, mm-hmm. and they, I mean he's swimming well. So. Yeah. Uh, these guys have spent a lot of time in the pool, and I think it's going to pay off here. Yeah. And then they've got some new kids like Rubor Tindy and Grant Bailey, who are going to—they're just learning. They're just learning the ropes, but right. uh, you could see—you could see that they're really athletic kids. It's just they haven't. Yeah. It's about putting <laughs> putting putting the mileage in. Yeah, yeah. I I, I know Grant. Uh, you know he's gotten so beat up over the last few years. There, I know he's looking forward to just getting healthy and and having some fun out there. And, yeah. So hopefully that's the case uh, case there, you know. 
it's always interesting when you take up a, a sport like that. It's not something that you, you do normally, so yeah. it's it's definitely takes a lot of work. So right, and then uh, on the girls' side, it's just a very very young team. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's really. I mean, eight of the twelve girls. There are twelve girls on the team. Eight of them had never swam competitively before. So, this is going to take some time. I mean, you know, even Stephanie Brown is like, you know, we're just trying to finish these relays legally. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, again, a lot of these. Again, when you see a DQ, it, it doesn't mean they're trying to get away with something. It just means they, you know, sometimes they miss a wall or right. or their, their 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 stroke on the breaststroke, you know, isn't quite legal. So they're just working, just developing endurance at this point and and developing, you know, relays. It, it's going to it's gonna take a little while. But, uh, and again, and Lewis Cass is a really good girls team right. year in and year out. So yeah. right, and they were at the Goshen Deca Duels, uh, kind of, which is kind of the season opening co-ed meet uh, a week earlier. And the boys went um, three and two, so they, they to do that at that meet when you get an, an Angola and a Northwood, you get a lot of bigger schools there. So the, that was a really good job by the boys, and I think it's going to be a very entertaining year for the boys. Yeah, uh, they're, they're they're a fun team to watch. So uh, what's coming up for them over the next week or so? Um, they've got, uh, I believe they have um, Manchester coming up on the schedule, and. Uh, Oh, actually, and actually, they also have uh, the Warsaw invite coming up on Saturday, mm-hmm. and that's going to be a big one because, of course, that's where the sectional meets are. Right. So uh, it'll be a good chance to now to swim in the sectional pool, get an idea of what that's like, and to swim against some really good competition. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Um, we're going to take a quick break, come back, and we're going to talk some Argus Dragons when we get back here on Talking Sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships, Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. Stop on by to In Your Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyarts will supply you with the most top-rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyarts' rental selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-4920 to see how Inyarts' friendly staff can help you. Paysetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Paysetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.paysettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. Welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val on a Thursday afternoon. and Let's talk a little Argus Dragons. The boys opened up their season with a loss on the road at Bremen, 45-53. Haven't played again yet, but they have a, a game on the road tomorrow at West Central, who started their season 0-1. So talk a little bit about the boys. Yeah, um, Sean Richard led the way with 19. Um uh, I don't think that's too big of a surprise. I think we expect Sean to be one of the leaders in scoring this team. But I think the other surprise was Makai Austin, the hmm. freshman with 14, and he had four threes against Bremen oh, wow. on the road. Yeah. So that's a very good start for him. You know, it's interesting. And then you know, um, the other freshman, uh, Zane Hellams. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, Zane with six off the bench. He had a couple threes. So Argus hit seven threes in that game, and six of the seven threes came from freshmen, hmm. uh, which is. Uh, you know that's a very good sign because 
you know, Luke Stoltz was held to six points, um, but eventually, if, if you can, if you can hit threes, that'll open up the inside for Luke Stoltz to do Luke Stoltz type things. Mm-hmm. I think that was a tough matchup right off the bat to go at Bremen, a team with pretty probably pretty good size and athleticism. Yeah. Um, and they, I think they were able to kind of hold Luke in check, but I mean, still they put forty five points up on the board. That's not bad. Uh, and you know, um, you know, uh, you know, Kenyon Belden. I mean, didn't score again. I I don't know what to expect because he's a fr- he's he's a freshman. He's a really athletic freshman, so I think he's going to contribute eventually. But I think this freshman class is going to be, um, you know, again they're they're. You know, thrown in the thrown in the pool right. to see if you can swim. Right. But I think they're going to do pretty well. I mean, I think it's a pretty athletically talented bunch. Yeah. But all, you know, I don't know. You can expect fourteen a game from Austin, but boy, he's he's off to a good start. And you know, Sean Richard is just a kid who you know, he scored. He had won three, but he scored nineteen points. So he's just a kid. You know, he can score off the dribble. He can back guys down. And you know, I think I, I talked with Coach, you know, uh, Jason Breeden, and he talked about. Just you know, Sean's overall leadership ability. So I think mm-hmm. this is going to be, again, you know, that Bremen game is always just that's just a pesky game to start off the season yeah. with. And, yeah. Um, it's it's a tough. non-conference game, and it's not a team you'll see in the future as far as playoffs go. So, right. Uh, you know, Bremen. Bremen's kind of hit and miss from year to year as far as their you know ability in basketball goes, but uh, yeah. generally they've got some strong kids up right. there. Right, Bremen also hit seven threes in that game yeah. too. So, yeah, uh, a tough loss, but I, I think uh, I think this Argus team is going to be going to have some potential. I think they, I mean there's just so many questions. What does the team going to look like without mm-hmm. JJ Morris? And, right, you know, and mm-hmm. without Nate Manikowski and without. You know all, all the you know uh, Elijah Osborne and what are they going to look like? But I, th- I think this team is going to be an interesting team. Yeah, uh, when it comes down to four starters and one of them's JJ. It's yeah, a, you know that's a lot of shoes to fill. Right now we'll see how they do at West Central. I mean West Central just played their first game on Tuesday and lost sixty three to fifty to Culver. So West Central is, and they gave up twenty. You know West Central gave up twenty five points to Culver's point guard Jack Rogers. So if Jack can have a big big game, how are they going to try and guard Sean Richard? Right. Um, and then after that, Argus plays four in a row at home: Laville, Jimtown, South Bend Career Academy, and Pioneer. Mm-hmm. The Laville game, our friends at Channel Forty Six are going to do that game on Tuesday yeah. um, night, and I'm curious to see how that game turns out because that's a Laville team. Um, you know, those Argus Laville games every year are just. Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah, and I mean Laville looks to be they healthy, go, right? And you know they've got a lot of really good kids. Was Zarnecki and Plummer, and, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean they've got uh, experience, but they've also those Argus Laville games are always tight games. They mm-hmm. always come down to the wire. It's not uncommon for them to go to overtime. So I'll be curious to see how that turns out. Was it two years ago? That was a four overtime game there at, at uh, Phil Waybright Gymnasium. Yeah, I, I thought it was two. Yeah, I thought it was two or three. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it would have been two because it would have been the last time they were at home because it was yeah. at Argus. I the, think 40... no, no, that was Bremen. That was Bremen in the Bay County. Okay. Well, yeah, that was four overtimes. Okay. Well, they did a 46 game. Maybe that wasn't against Bremen. The 46 game was against the, the That was against Bremen. Yeah, at, that was four at, overtimes and 46 had that one, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I, I was mixing that up with yeah, Bremen. So, yeah, but I mean, the, the Laveau games have been close to I think there was a double yeah. overtime game in the, in the last few years. So, mm-hmm. And of course, Coach Breeden knows that from. From both angles, right. Uh, so it'll be, I'll be curious to see, and then, you know, Jimtown. I, th- I don't think that game will be easy either. Yeah. But Argus had a pretty good record against Jimtown over the years. So, and then that first conference game against South Bend Career Academy, and that's, uh, I think the Hoosier Plains is going to be every game is going to be hard fought. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any game where you just show up and you're going to win in the Hoosier Plains. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the girls uh, setting at three and four. They won at Trinity. That was. Uh, a little bit of a record-breaking night, 69-22, and uh, Miss Redinger had 50 of those 69. Right, and it was funny. I saw the final score. I was like, "Oh, I've got to see the box score. I've got to see the box score. I've got to see the box." You know, I've been <laughs> whenever Coach Jennings sends me the box score, I'm just in anticipating. Like, how many did Sam have? How many did Sam have? Yeah, yeah she had 50. Broke, broke her own record that she'd set just a week before. Right. I mean, she had nine threes in that Trinity Greenlaw game. Now she game. has that record by herself. Right. And then, 
you know, I, I think in the, when she had 47 in the game against Elkhart Christian, I think she went, did she go like 11 for 11? And then the, uh, from the following this game, she only went 3 for 3, but she hit the 9 threes. So, again, she just serves it up however you want it. I mean, if she, if her 3 is falling, then she's deadly. But if she if it's not falling, she's going to drive to the basket and she's going to score that way. And, again, I mean, she's she's so strong and so athletic that it's if you foul her, you're going to foul her a lot, and she's a dead-eye free-throw shooter as well. Mm -hmm. So, But on, t on top of that, Morgan Barkas is averaging, because she's got Sam Redinger as a teammate, she's averaging like six or seven assists a game. Yeah. And she's hit, you know, she's, you know, she had uh, nine, uh, I think she had nine in that win over Culver, mm -hmm. and then um, Olivia Lead had nine in the win over Culver as well. It, we mentioned we should mention they won the Bell game fifty seven to nineteen over Culver. Mm -hmm. Redinger at twenty nine and uh Barkus and Lead had nine apiece. Did did I see one game Morgan had eleven assists? I think yeah. I, I think Was so. that the Trinity I, game? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean it's uh you know, I, I really I really want to see and we talked about that, I, I really want to see what uh, Rochester can do against Sam because um it's not right. like it's not like it's a secret. You know, and yeah. everybody knows who she is. Yeah. And she's still able to do it. So Right. Yeah. So, again, Argus is at North Judson tonight. And that's going to be interesting. Judson is having a really good year. Having a really nice year with a new, co new coach. They're, they're doing well. Um, it's a, and it's interesting because Judson, they're they're really relying on balance scoring. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got the he Regan Hensley, but, I mean, she's kind of their senior leader. But they've got a lot of girls who can score. They've got yeah. some freshmen who are playing well. To see you know how they do against Argus, and then Argus uh, has a home game with West Central at Phil Waybright on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, and then they have that annual back to back, a Thursday Friday back to back at Rochester at Culver Academy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of games that, again, the, you know, the, again, so much talk about it. what is this Argus team going to look like? No Bella Stoltz, no Emma Dunlap, no Bailey Binkley, but I think this team is going to be competitive all year. Yeah, and it's not just the Sam show though. It's she's obviously the marquee player. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm curious to see. You know, you talk about you know Culver Academy and and Rochester. I mean, they've got a they've got a string of games coming up here that if they can pull out some wins over there, those are going to be impressive wins. Right, and obviously everybody's got that December twenty first date circled on their calendar with Bethany coming to town. Yeah, I mean that's going to have a huge impact on that Hoosier Plains race. Right. That's a very good Bethany Christian team. So. Right, uh, Argus two and zero in the in the league so far. Yeah, should be uh, should be fun to to watch how this plays out for the Lady Dragons here over the next uh, month or so. Yeah, and see where they're at uh, early January. Mm -hmm. The uh, Cavaliers. Um, we talked about the boys lost their opener against Rochester. Came back with a win. Went on the road at West Central and won sixty three fifty. Well, Jack Rogers makes a difference. That's yeah. one thing we know already. I said, I, that's why I was. That's why I said, boy, teams are looking. Di forget about teams looking different from the way they did last year. They're looking different from the way they did yeah. last week. Culver's one of those teams because Jack Rogers had 25 points, and I mean, Kyle Evans was talking up how good Jack Rogers was before the season started, and then he had to miss the Rochester game uh, due to a disciplinary reason. But he was back against West Central, and I mean, 25 points, and boy, that makes a difference. Not only that, but Jonas McEwen at 13. So you get, and then Guasp had ten. So you've got, you know, and then you know David Height hasn't had a double figure scoring game yet, but you, he's going to get there. Mm -hmm. And now this Culver team can score a little bit, and I'm curious to see um, if they can keep that up. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, again, defensively they had issues against Rochester because Rochester just kind of picked apart that zone. And then part of that, too, was the turnovers, not having Jack around. Mm -hmm. You know, Rochester, a lot of it was just in transition. Like I was talking, like Kyle Evans, I was asking Kyle Evans about transition defense. He goes, it's really not transition defense where their team just steals it at half court and goes in for an uncontested layup. That's not mm -hmm. really anything you can defend. So this team will get better. I think Jack will, having getting Jack back will also make this team better defensively. Yeah. They got a uh, double header coming up tomorrow with the girls against the uh, Lakeland Christian Academy. Um, you know, Lakeland Christian lost that opener to uh, Caston, so they're zero and one coming into this. Right, one. Culver's next three games: home with Lakeland Christian, at North Miami, at Knox. Mm -hmm. well, they might be favored in all three. Yeah, I mean, it's not crazy to think they'll be four and one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, they'll, they'll have to earn it, but I mean, it's not crazy to think they'll be four and one uh, with 
And then Winnemac comes to town on December twelfth, which would be then that, that would be a really interesting game. Yeah. You know for. You know, if you can get to that point. I mean, yeah. but again, Culver's played Knox well over, over the years. I mean, I know Coach Eskridge, I mean, he'll have his boys ready, but I mean, we, we don't know much about the Knox boys because they're, they just got off the football field, basically. Yeah. But I mean, this, uh, I'm curious to see how this, this turns out for, for Culver. Yeah, North Miami would be interesting just because, you know, obviously that's going to be a, a conference game for them coming up next year. So, yeah. How are those two teams going to fare? And, I'm I'm really curious to see uh, you know both sides uh, and the girls and the boys against Lakeland Christian. How can they uh, yeah. how can they do here on Friday? Look at the Culver boys with Rogers and Jonas McHugh, and it's like they get two point guards out there, mm-hmm. and then Height can handle it as well. Right. So the turnovers were an issue against Rochester, but I don't think that's going to be a long term problem. Right. Uh, but you know Height's got to stay out of foul trouble, and Ethan Binion's got to stay out of foul trouble too. I mean it's, they're not a deep team. Yeah. I, I like, I mean, like you said, I like Caudell. Yeah, I like Caudell, and and you know you got the the foreign exchange student in Gwasp. Uh, you know he he adds a, an element too. He can shoot it from outside. So right, so you can spread the court yeah. a little bit. They don't have a you know, Binion is not a true back to the basket player. He's more of a face up guy. Yeah. Well, uh, who is anymore? Right. I mean, I mean, it's not a real common thing anymore. Yeah. I mean, they had that kid last year in Shane Schumann, and, mm-hmm. and Culver has had done. done so Kyle Evans has been the coach. He's done a good job of developing those back to the basket guys. I don't think he really has one this year, uh, so we'll see how they do. But I th- they're not they're not deep, but I think they'll be deeper mm-hmm. uh, as the season goes on. So on the girls' side, they're sitting at three and six. We talked about that loss to uh, to Argus and then Rochester loss. Yeah, um, I mean, they have a, a game against the LCA. LCA girls are three and three, and then they have a, a big one coming up at OD. That's always a difficult place to play. You talk about difficult places to play. They go at OD, and OD's doing better. They're three and five. Yeah, OD's doing a little bit better. I mean, because yeah. OD plays a tough schedule too. I, again, Grace Seaver means so much because she gets. It's just you can tell she just gets everybody kind of organized. Mm-hmm. And you know, Maddie Hamilton is is uh, she stepped in and she's done a nice job. Um, uh, the, I like I like Haley Parker. I think she's gonna be a good player. Um, again, she's just very very young. Um, I, you know, again, Amaya Williams has got to be there and healthy because I'm, I think Amaya, uh, she just has a lot of leadership. Mm-hmm. You know, she now, now she's the leader. I mean, she yeah, is, plus size. <laughs> yeah, and plus her rebounding ability, yeah. and uh, she's got to stay out of foul trouble too. But I, Amaya is just such a benefit to have out there. And uh, I, I think Amaya's grown a little bit. I think she's she's close to six foot. Yeah, I mean, she's got some good size. And I like Brooke Davis too. I think she's going to be, you know, she's she's. Good size, what about five eight five nine? Pretty athletic, can handle it a little, little bit, can pass it a little bit. Um, as she gets stronger, she's going to be able to score at the rim a little bit. Um, yeah, good. Yeah, this there's a lot of potential here, and then Seaver kind of leading the way. But they've got it again. It'll help. They'll be. I think they'll have a good chance against um, Lakeland Christian if assuming Grace is back, and I think she's going to be back. Mm-hmm. And then that OD game will be a, a challenge. And then they mm-hmm. go to Knox, and Knox is a team that's struggling a little bit. So Yeah. Yeah, that's a big conference game for uh, for Culver at Knox. So And we talk about the the new look of the conference. OD will be a conference game next year as well. Right, right. Yeah, so. And uh, we should mention uh, A.J. Adam Neese coached the team by himself last night. A.J. Neese was in bed with 103-degree fever. So get well, get well soon, A.J. Yeah, definitely, Coach. All right, let's take another quick break here. When we come back, let's talk a little Cass County Tournament. We'll talk Cass and Pioneer coming up next here on Talking Sports with Val. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit Kriskin'sPoolsAndSpas.com Call 574-857-3100 or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskins can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. 
Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. Oh. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. Let's move south of Rochester here a little bit. Cass County Tournament. It's always a good early season barometer for the boys, and you know the the girls get together here. They're about uh, eight to ten games into the season. Some of them less than that, but uh, yeah, it's always a good tournament uh, for everybody there in Cass County. We got Caston and Pioneer both participating in that. The uh, second round of that. First round, second set of games was last night, and the Caston boys and girls taking on Lewis Cass. And for the comments, they came in one and zero off of a big win uh, versus LCA in their opener, 66-25, mm-hmm. uh, taking on Lewis Cass. And uh, I think the story of the game uh, for the comments in that one: the one of nine from the free throw line. Right, one of nine, and Lewis Cass was thirteen for seventeen. Yeah, so and the. What- uh, Around 80%. So, yeah. They end up going into overtime, and the uh, Kings get the uh, win 38-34 over uh, Caston. So there was an opportunity late there to uh, to kind of put uh, the Comets back in front, two free throws down one. They miss both free throws. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Lewis Cass goes down, scores two. The Comets do hit a three to tie it, but uh, it goes in overtime, and the Kings win it by four and then in overtime. Right, I mean, and one thing about Cast, and we're going to, I think they're defensively, I think this is, a, they've made quite a bit of strides already. They held Lakeland Christian at 25, Lewis Castle scored 38, and it went overtime, and that was L.J. Hillis basically t- putting the team on his back in mm-hmm. 24 of the 38. Um, so they might have trouble matching up against teams that have good big guy. I mean, how tall is L.J. Hillis? I mean, he's... He's he's a good 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, yeah. yeah. So, that, you know... I, how will they handle teams with good big guys? But I think defensively, they've already shown a lot of strides. I, yeah. Again, I, I'm not worried about getting buckets. Um, Caleb Stinson can score. Talon Zider can score. They're seniors. They played They played together for a long time. Now you had Josh Evans into the mix with three threes last night. He had nine points. So mm-hmm. uh, Stinson, Zider, and Evans combined for 32 of the 34. Yeah. Um, you know, Alex Craig, I think, had a bucket last night. Um you know, Grant Yeadon, I don't think he's going to be a big-time scorer, but I think he's going to really help down low in terms of, you know, same thing with uh, Corbin Smith. Uh, Lane Hook didn't score last night, but he's going to be a good player. Mm-hmm. And he's going to put the ball in the basket as well. Yeah. So, uh, you know, cast off to a one and one start. Um, you know, Cass won eight games last year. I think I think you're going to win more than eight this year. Yeah. They, they definitely like to shoot the threes. You yeah. had 11 threes against LCA, and... Um, I think they had their first 15 points all came from beyond the arc last night. So they uh, they definitely live and die by that three. Right. I mean, they get really good spacing, and they know they know where they want to go with the ball. I mean, they they so it's not. I don't. Yeah, they're tough to guard, mm-hmm. and and I think they get and they're really good at breaking down zones. Mm-hmm. So I I'm curious to see how teams try and guard them. Yeah. You know, do you? Because if you guard the man, well, Caleb Stinson is really quick. Yeah. So he's yeah. hard. He's hard to contain man to man. Yeah. He had a nice drive there in the second half where uh, he ended up basically with his back to the basket and kind of went up over his head, mm-hmm. flipped it in. Is that was pretty? It was kind of like the old Jordan move. Uh-huh. You know how he would do that. And um, yeah, I mean he's got he's got a lot of uh, positive attributes to his game. That's yeah. for sure. So. Mm-hmm. So Caston's, you know, they play Frontier. They, excuse me, Caston plays Pioneer mm-hmm. Friday night at Logansport in the consolation game of the Cass County Invite. 
Uh, Cass had a lot. The, you know, the Reese. It's, this is one of those rivalries when Cass and play Pioneer. The there are like these momentum swings in the rivalry. Like one team wins like four or five in a row, and then the other team wins four or five in a row. We're in that period now where Cass has been kind of controlling this rivalry. Yeah. So we'll see how they do. I think Cass and be Pioneer was it twice last year. So we'll see how they do this time. Uh, again, the key is kind of from if you're cast and how do you go about defending Drew McKegg? Mm-hmm. Uh, again, we worry about you worry about cast and guarding big guys. Well, Pioneer doesn't really have one. Mm-hmm. So again, I think the matchup favors Caston a little bit, but uh, you know we'll see and we'll see how uh, cast and you know Pioneer likes to play zone. How will cast and uh, do uh, against Pioneer Zone. Yeah. The uh, Panthers lost their opener at uh, Logan Sport on Tuesday in that uh, first round game against the Berries, 38 59. And it was uh, it was good to see, though, Mike Aranz was on the floor playing for the yeah, Panthers. Yeah, I think that sure. was a good sign. Yeah. I, you know, Drew McKegg and Braden Erickson had 22 of the 38. That's mm-hmm. not too big of a surprise. Right. But, um, you know, can they get some contributions from these other guys, like a Luke Blackman, like a Mike Aranz. Mm-hmm. Uh, will the freshmen be helping out? Um, Weaver and Ryan and those guys. So, mm-hmm. uh, and ha- you know, Coach McKegg likes to play a lot of guys. I think he played 10, 10 or eleven guys, and that's pretty typical for him. At least early in the season, he's mm-hmm. he's not afraid to play a lot of kids. And uh, you know, I, I, uh, and again, Logan, Logan Sports a tough matchup because they're long yeah. and athletic. Yeah, and they got the two they got the two Taylor brothers. They get, and they get Del Valle. I mean, they held Del, Del Valle to three points, and Logansport still put 59 points up on the board. That's a yeah. tough, tough game at the Berry Bowl right off the bat. Let's see how they do this time, and let's see if, it, if Pioneer can cover cast and shooters. I was really impressed. I haven't seen Del Valle. I don't think – I must not have seen him last year, mm-hmm. but uh, he has definitely put on some muscle mm-hmm. from when I saw him when he was a freshman. Yeah. I mean, he's he looks like a different kid. Yeah. And, and he plays different, too. Mm-hmm. But uh, – yeah, I mean it's a it's a tough Logan Sport team, you know, to open up your season with. Right. You got to go the, to the, their the, place. The Russell kid for Logan Sport's a really good shooter as well. I mean, it's yeah. yeah. I think Logan Sport's gonna have a good year. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. year, I really like their coach. He's he's definitely changed that culture there. They kind of had a string there where they were struggling a little bit with coaches. They, you know, you bring an IU coach in there. What are you gonna expect, <laughs> right? But uh, I really like him. I think he's got that program going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So. On the girls' side of things, you know, last night's game at Caston looked to be a, a very competitive game with Lewis Cass, both teams coming in unbeaten, and boy, the Comets wouldn't have any of it. Yeah. <laughs> they just dominated Lewis Cass. Yeah, so much for Caston coming out rusty after Ooh. a 15-day layoff. Caston jumps out to a 13 to nothing lead, and they was, go on and win 53-28. to It was actually 15 because they that went into the second quarter then, okay. and they scored the first bucket. Okay. Yeah, so, so was, and then they finally Lewis Cass hit a three. So, yeah, 15-0 to start the game. It was crazy. Right. Isabel Scales just – she was just great again. I mean, 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 assists, and I think 5 steals on top of that. Addison Zippelman had 13. Maddie Douglas had 10. And Macy Hinderleiter had nine. Mm. I mean, for Macy to have a good game against a pretty good team like that, uh, boy, to give them a fourth score, I mean, Lewis uh, Cass plays a pretty tough defense. For Cass, about 53 points up on the board, that's pretty good. And, and I'm, you know, I'm watching Annie Harsh, and I'm like, she's just doing all the little things. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's playing great. And Macy Hinderleiter had a great pass across the paint. I think it was to Scales. I mean, you know, it was a great uh, drive and kick and – Boy, I mean, it, I did, I told my wife last night we were watching that game, and I, I said this looks like women playing against girls. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just look different. You know, you you know, you can tell. I mean, Scales is just so strong, and Addison Zippelman is so strong. And right now, I mean, they're they are rolling. Yeah. And you know they they get to, they get to take on Pioneer as well. The Panthers get, uh, pick up their first win of the season. Uh, against Logan Sport on Tuesday night. That was uh, that was a fun game. That was a fun one. Okay, I'm going to trust you on this <laughs> one, but uh, you were there. I mean, Pioneer beat Logan Sport 48-45. Uh, McKenna Stricker had 26. She went 13 for 20 from the foul line, 20 free throw attempts in one <laughs> game. Uh, and then Mia McKegg had 10, so 36 of the 48 came from two players. Yeah. Pioneer scored 27 points in the third quarter. Yeah. They had scored... Their season high for points in a 20. game was 29. Their season's high. 
the season high for yeah. points in the game was 29. Yeah. They scored 27 in the third quarter. Yeah, they scored more in the third quarter than they scored against Clinton Central or Knox. Right. And and Stricker and McKegg had 21 of the 27 in that yeah. quarter. Yeah. Um, I guess from a, a parental standpoint, mm-hmm. that was the game that I knew she had in her, and mm-hmm. I was just hoping that sometime it would come out. But mm-hmm. it was fun. That third quarter was really fun. Uh, just – they were breaking the press and and they were just getting uh, easy shots and mm-hmm. uh, you know give give Logan Sport a lot of credit because they came back and uh, you know L- Lydia Goad I mean mm-hmm. she is a great player and she was hitting threes in that fourth quarter and it was all the Panthers could do to hold on to get that win I mean they came back with a fury and right you know Coach Chris Keesling I mean he he's got his players ready he's uh, he's not real deep in the, on that team and, but uh, boy they. You know, they give them a good game. Right, they've got Go, they've got Arison Good, mm-hmm. and they've got uh, Kellen Kripe is on mm-hmm. that team. So, yeah, they were, Pioneers up by 13 after three quarters. They hung on a win by three. Yeah. So it was a good win, uh, you know, get uh, get off the schneid there for the Panthers, right. obviously, after an 0-4 start. Right. So that sets up a Cast and Pioneer championship game on Saturday night. And, again, Pioneers got to keep the turnovers down. But, boy, yeah. it's easier said than done against this cast and defense that yeah. is just smothering teams. Well, that's the one thing they were able to do against Logan Sport. And, you, and most people would say, okay, 18 turnovers, that's a lot. But not considering what Pioneer had done in the first mm-hmm. four games. So they uh, they really did uh, knock that down quite a bit. And Yeah, they're going to have to they're gonna have to limit turnovers against this cast and team. And it's easier said than done. Right, because, I mean, it's – there's like Matty Douglas is kind of like the first wave of defense. Mm-hmm. Then there's like two more waves of defense you have to get just to even get a, a decent look at the basket. Yeah, just to and, get to the three point line. Yeah, so you just yeah. have, so it's just going to take a lot of it's just going to take a lot of discipline because Cast is good at all levels defensively. I mm-hmm. mean that was a Lewis Cast team that had been scoring it pretty much at will. I mean they held what they held Afton Griffin to was it two or three points mm-hmm. last night. I mean, Kinsey Menon had a good game, but they, Hedda Kasunin, the foreign exchange student, I hope I'm pronouncing Hedda's name, and they held her to four, mm-hmm. and she had been scoring in double figures regularly. So, yeah, yeah, this is a hard, difficult cast and team to difficult cast and team to score on. Let's see if Pioneer can can get to the bucket <laughs> and get something going to the bucket. Yeah, I mean that was the number what 14 team in 2A that it was undefeated, five and zero going into that game, and they yeah. they beat them by 30. Yeah, so. And how does Pioneer match up on the defensive end against Caston as right, well? Right, right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, oof, but, uh, you know, it's – the thing that I'm so impressed with Caston about when they they kind of make you think that you have an, a lane or they make you think that you have a pass, and they know you don't have that pass mm-hmm. because they're where they want to be. And, and so – it's it's really critical on those uh you know they they do that half court trap in the corner and then yeah. they they jump that pass back to the middle and you may think it's open and they know yeah. and they're going for a layup the other way so yeah turnovers is going to be the key can they can pioneer limit their turnovers against the the comets at all I mean, right cuz right cuz it can't it can't become a shootout i don't think if the no. game gets into the 40s or the 50s, I think then it favors Caston. Yeah, and I, I think that's what Caston wants to do. They mm-hmm. want to run. Mm-hmm. So if you can slow it down, make it a half-court game, limit your turnovers, uh, you might have a shot to stay in it if you're Pioneer. So, right. And the, the Panthers, you know, they have some winnable games coming up. They go to North White next week, and then they go to La- Laporte. So, you know, a couple games that, uh, you know, should be winnable for the Panthers. So. Right, and as for Caston... You know they get through this to- they get through this tournament and then that early December stretch that we talk about every year starts on Thursday night. They get Judson at home and then at Triton, at Pioneer, and at Knox. Yeah, four conference games in an eight day span. Yeah, and you know congratulations Pioneer, you won a game, you make it to the championship. Now you got to play Caston twice in the next four games. Yeah, <laughs> so there's your reward for that. Mm-hmm. So, all right, anything else on? Uh, Either of those teams before we move on? Uh, no, unless you unless you have something to add. But I mean, I, I just yeah, me, so. me, me and McKeg has been. I mean, if she can, uh, it's great to see progress from her. Yeah, yeah, she's she's a, and you know what I and I then Lo, about, Lois Layer is oh also Lois been, Layer yeah, yeah, yeah I mean Jocelyn just a freshman team, yeah. yeah Layer started against Logan Sports so uh, she played a really good game. Um, so you, you had said that. 
Pioneer is developing kind of some confidence after the Wabash game, even though yeah. they lost that game 44-29. Yeah, they did. Um, you know, it's it's hard to say you're happy about a 15-point loss, but it really felt like a, a good game for them. Mm-hmm. They just got to – they kind of did it again last night or on Tuesday. They had that quarter, you know, the fourth quarter this time, but uh, they scored six, so it wasn't, you know, like they didn't score any. But, right. You know, the first four games, they had two two games where they did not score in the second quarter at all mm-hmm. against uh, Clinton Central and against Knox. So that's something that uh, you can't do. Right. You know, you got to get you got to get points in every quarter. So, um, yeah. So the the boys will play on Friday night, the consolation at six, and the six thirty six thirty, and then the uh, championship at eight fifteen mm-hmm. uh, for the boys. So it'll be Pioneer and Caston for the consolation on the uh, boys, and then Logan Sport will take on Lewis Cast for the championship. Then Saturday, same times, with. Um, uh, Lewis Cass and Logan in the uh, Constellation and then Pioneer and Caston in the championship game from the Berry Bowl in Logan Sport. So I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Let's take another quick break and we'll come back and we'll wrap things up. We'll talk Valley and the Winnemac Warriors when we get back. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over $50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.FultonCountyRMC.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Welcome back here to Talking Sports with Val as we wrap up our final segment here. We're going to talk some Tippecanoe Valley boys and girls and uh, some more Winnemac boys and girls here to wrap things up for a Thursday afternoon. The the Tippecanoe Valley boys, Val, uh, you look down their schedule and they got a lot of really good teams on their schedule, and, and the first two games were no, uh, you know, exception to that. Lost their opener to Mishawaka, forty-seven sixty-one, and then lost to the Fort Wayne Southside Archers, fifty-four sixty-four. Um, you know, Valley fifty-five, 64. Yeah, that's why I have wrote down. What oh, did I say? You said fifty-four. Okay. Well, I can't read my own writing, but um, yeah, sixty-four fifty-five. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, without uh, Riley Shepard, they're you know trying to figure things out and, and find out who's going to be their scoring. And yeah, uh, I was at the I was at the Fort Wayne Southside game, so basically the entire second half of that game, mm-hmm. and they're struggling with turnovers right now. Um, Got some against, highlights here while you're talking about okay. that. Keep going. Um, now, um, and that. that that's you know they're just a little inconsistent. Just you know they'll have a possession or two where they look really, they look really good, and then a possession or two they're really really, really struggle. And then on top of that, um, Kyler Johnson got banged up in the fourth quarter against um, Southside, and that really 
hard because they really rely on um, Kyler's kind of his leadership out there. Um, Stephen Acasi, you can tell that he's made a big step up. I mean, he's he's just more more comfortable in his hands. He's more comfortable finishing around the bucket. Because um, again, Fort Wayne Southside had a good size too, mm-hmm. and um, but Stephen was still you know he had uh, thirteen against uh, Mishawaki had eighteen against Fort Wayne Southside. Ian Cooksey struggled against Mishawaki. He had from a scoring standpoint, he had four. But in this game against Fort Wayne Southside, he had 19. But, again, they're just struggling ball handling-wise with that Shepard. You know, Davis Cowan is a young kid who's come in and is really trying to to kind of, uh, you know, get get the offense in gear. He's, he's going to be a different type of player than Tate Kaiser. Mm-hmm. But Davis, having said that, you know, he, uh, Davis is more of a kind of a true point guard, kind of I want to set up these other guys. But you know, having said that, Davis has got a nice looking shot himself. He's just young, and um, again, you know, it's what twenty one twenty at halftime. Um, but again, you know, Valley just kind of struggled with Fort Wayne Southside's pressure. I, I thought that I thought that kind of the key aspect was right around this time of the game, like about halfway through the third quarter, and Fort Wayne Southside goes on a run. And they they go up. I think it was like thirty six thirty. You know they had this. Uh, you know Belcher, their big guy, is six seven. I mean he he had an inch or two on Steven. And then they go on another run, and it was what forty to thirty, going into the fourth quarter. And then there was this crazy play. I don't know if we have it on the highlights. Where Fort Wayne Southside they try a. They have a two on zero fast break. They try a one guy throws the ball off the backboard. The other guy who's behind him misses the dunk, mm. and all of a sudden the the whole momentum of the game turned around in Valley's favor, and they went on like in a fourteen to two run. Instead of it looked like Southside was about to run away with it up by like fourteen or sixteen, and then Valley gets it down to two. Mm-hmm. Watch the steal and the layup by Cowan on an inbounds pass, and they get the lead down to two. Uh, Coach Foster from Fort Wayne Southside had to use a couple timeouts, but then they and they they finally kind of settled down. They went in a ten to one run, and then. Uh, Wes Parker, it's a couple free throws there with 1.9 seconds to go to get the final margin down in the single digits. But Fort Wayne Southside does win 64 to 55. But um, you know what, Coach? I talked with Joe Luce after the game. He talked about and I asked him about Cowan, and he talked about, hey, he did great, but he's got you know, you can't just start playing hard when the shot when your shot starts to fall. Mm-hmm. You have to play hard and confident even when your shot's not falling. Right. And you, you can't play with more. You just can't start playing with energy when your shot's falling. And that's that's part of the maturation process for this team. Yeah. Boy, they miss Riley Shepard a lot. I mean, yeah. I know Riley's not a, not a true ball handler, but just to, to spread the floor a little bit. And, I mean, they, you know, not only – and obviously, obviously they miss the kids they graduated too. I mean, they miss Tate Kaiser, and they miss Nolan Cumberland, and they miss Cooper Walls, and they, they miss the hustle element that Dylan Neese brought off the bench too. Mm-hmm. So – this is a team that's getting familiar with the, with themselves. It it was very frustrating at uh, you know no doubt it was frustrating at times. But I talked with Joe Luce afterwards. He said he goes we're probably going to lose a few. He admitted he goes we we might lose a few more games this year than we did last year. They went eighteen and six last year. He goes we might lose more than, than more games than that. But he goes this schedule is designed to get us ready for the postseason. Mm-hmm. And he's absolutely right about that. I mean you had a Fort Wayne Southside to their you know pretty good Fort Wayne Southside team to their schedule. You know, and you know now. You know the 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 Knox game that was scheduled for Friday. That's been postponed to February 9th. But they got Bremen, another sectional opponent, on Saturday. Who looks like a pretty tough yeah. team. And then you get Morgan Township and John Glenn. I think Morgan Township's a really good team. They'll mm-hmm. be one of the better teams in the Porter County Conference. And of course, John Glenn was the team that knocked them out of sectional last year. Yeah. And then you go to Peru and Wheeler. <laughs> yeah. You know, and Peru I don't know much Re- about Wheeler, but Peru definitely is right. And Peru, yeah. Peru beat Valley and Valley last year. So. Yeah. And then they go to the adult tournament. I, I, I Coach Luce was talking about that tournament. He goes, that, that'll be another really yeah. challenging tournament, December 27th and 28th. So. Yeah. That's a Delta team, and I'm sure they probably have some other really good teams there, but they're always really I think good. Delta, I think Delta's ranked in 3A. Yeah. Coach Detweiler does a great, great job there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, the, if they wind up playing them. And then their first game in January is against a Plymouth team, and Plymouth is the real deal. I think this is... Plymouth is now back to where being their a Plymouth basket. <laughs> this is what you expect from Plymouth. Yeah. And their second game in the month of January is at McConaughey. 
Hmm. And <laughs> jo- Josiah Ball scored 37. Yeah. If you if you want to look a month ahead. Yeah. A month or six weeks ahead. One of one of their four at yeah. games. Yeah. They, yeah. Besides the tournament, they only have four road games. So. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be. Uh, do they expect Riley back at all? Or is he... uh, late December. In late December. Okay. So we'll see. He, he Coach Luce kind of sounded that Delta tournament December 27th. So obviously, uh, if you're a Rochester fan, you're kind of wondering, will he be back for us? Yeah. That's December 22nd. I, I don't know about that. But yeah. Coach yeah. Luce has said late December. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the girls have uh, had some time off since that win against the Rochester Zebras. They go to Plymouth tonight, and then Wednesday they go to Triton. So a pair of games up in Marshall County for – uh, Coach Kendig and the girls. Right, and uh, obviously, first of all, let's talk about Macy Peterson. She verbally committed yeah. to North Central University. This is the one. This is the North Central University in Minneapolis. Okay. This is a D three school. So really happy for Macy after all yeah. the health issues oh, yeah. she's been through. She's had a lot. I mean, not only the torn ACL, but she had was it two years ago when she was basically banged up for the entire year. So, and Macy plays so hard. I, I'm just so happy for her to do that and that she's getting recognized. I, I couldn't. I, like I couldn't believe when I saw her on the floor for that first game. I'm like, "How is she back already?" Yeah. And she doesn't even look like she's missed a beat. Yeah. I mean, she looks great. Yeah. So they get Plymouth at home tonight. Uh, this is a Plymouth team, you know, with that lost uh, Delp, who uh, Taylor Delp had just and she had just had big games against Valley her entire career. So we'll see how Valley does tonight. I mean, you know, you'd have to think they'd be favored, and then at Triton and at North Miami. I mean, Valley's had good success against those teams. And then, you know, at Winnemac, curious to see how they do against a much-improved Winnemac team. That The Valley-Winnemac games at Winnemac have always been kind of close, hard-fought games. Well, even last year at Valley. Right, Valley, I mean, bro- Valley Winnemac, broke it open in the fourth quarter. Yeah, but, yeah. but Winnemac was right there for three-quarters of that game. Yeah, so, right. And then that leads you into that big rematch with Western in the first round of the Carroll Tournament, and that is going to be an awesome eight-team tournament. <sighs> And you get Western right off the bat, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow, there's just a lot of great teams. Obviously, Carroll is going to be a great. The host team is going to be great. They got Ali Harness is going to Western Michigan. I'd love to see how I love to see Valley play them at some point. But uh, yeah. whoever whoever Valley plays, that's going to be a competitive tournament. Yeah, Wagner's going to Trine. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a great senior group there at Carroll. Right. So again, Valley, you know, Valley kind of in the a similar boat with Cass and kind of coming off this long layoff. Let's see how they do uh against Plymouth tonight, but again, Valley does it with defense. I mean, mm-hmm. and again, it's kind of like Cass and where it's just like it's waves of defense. If mm-hmm. you're if you're fortunate enough to get by Chesney Miller, mm-hmm. yeah. then you got then you just kind of get fed into the hen house. Yeah. And it's just, you know, the fox is in the hen house with e-golf and and uh, Ava Smith, and and again, uh, Valley defends the post so well too, mm-hmm. and they defend the high post so well. And, 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 and Gabby Gonzalez, hopefully she's back. I mean, there's just a lot you have to deal with to try to score a basket against Valley. Yeah, I mean it was a good time to have a, a little bit of a break for them because they were nursing a few injuries. So, um, oh you know, yeah, I mean you, you play get, you right. get Gabby back, and yeah. yeah, Gabby was hurt against Rochester. I mean she was hurt going into the game. I think yeah. Might have aggravated it a little bit, so hopefully she'll be back. Right. And, but again, Valley, I mean, you know, again, I, I'm, uh, and then you, you know, you get back from that holiday tournament. Who's your first game in the month of January at Northridge? Hmm. And that Northridge team has, they have been lighting it up. I mm-hmm. mean, they beat they beat Carroll by thirty the other night. So at, that that might be the toughest game on Valley's schedule. And then the next night they play Knox, and you know, Valley's four and zero against sectional opponents, but they haven't played Knox yet. So we'll see how they do against uh, them. Yeah, future uh, conference opponent. For a little, if you want to look ahead uh, five, six weeks in the schedule. <laughs> right. We're always doing that, aren't we? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. So They can. We yeah. Can. Yeah, so 7-1 and one through the first eight games. I mean, they, they seem right. to have it going. So. And Western, you know, Western is a top-10 team in 3A. I mean, mm-hmm. there's no, you don't have to apologize for losing to them on their, on their home floor. And mm-hmm. you were tied with four minutes to go. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Winnemac, we already talked about uh, a little bit. The boys are going to be at Rochester tomorrow night. They started, uh, they've started their season. Good start for Coach Springer, 2-0. Boy, you, just, you just watch the video. I mean, I haven't seen any of the games in person myself, but just watch the video. This team is, you know, they're well-prepared. They're confident. You can tell this team is coached, even though it's a, he's a first-year coach. You can tell he's been around <laughs> he's, the block. He's coached a couple years. He's coached a couple years. And, they, you know, I mean, and, you know, the – 
this team has been you can just tell they're playing with a lot of confidence out there. They were they trailed by they trailed Twin Lakes by ten at halftime and came back and won that game by five. They trailed North Newton for a lot of that game. They were down at and they trailed North Newton at the end of three quarters in that game and they came back and won that game. I and they're not they can shoot the three, but they're not three point dependent. Mm-hmm. I mean the Malco the two Malco brothers combined for forty three. I think uh, was it Will had twenty three and John had twenty against North Newton. But combined, they only had one three. I mean, mm-hmm. they're just great. They can just get to the basket at will. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they if they got to hit threes too, they can do that. I mean, you know, Jay, they haven't needed Jace Bentel that much this year. But you know, he can score two, and then Brendan Hines can hit from the outside. So they've got really four legitimate scores. Aiden, G- Aiden Jimenez is kind of doing a nice job holding down the fort inside. They don't need a ton of scoring from him. They just need, you know, he's got five fouls and. Well, hopefully he can maybe use a couple of them. But I think Aiden Jimenez is doing a nice job. I'm, I'm really curious to see how they do against this Rochester team where the teams are both really kind of athletic mm-hmm. and, and how they how they, how they they guard each other. I'm, I'm really curious to see how they do. And they got, uh, after that, they have Manchester coming in on Tuesday. Right, and that means Gavin Benton. Yeah. And you talk about a, you know, a very distinct inside presence. Manchester has that. Right, huh. and now he and now Ben can from everybody. Everybody's saying he can go out and shoot threes now. Oh gosh! So I mean, that's he's, what they need is somebody else that can shoot threes at Manchester. Right, and you know they've got the the Hendrick. Uh, their guards are underrated too. The Hendricks kid, I like him a lot. Oh yeah. I mean, this you know uh, they put up uh, you know again Manchester's just in that tough sectional with Fort Wayne Blackhawk and Adam Central. Uh-huh. But uh, that's that's a good Manchester team. That this is going to be a great challenge for the, the Winnemac coming up. Yeah. Be curious to see how they do over the next two games. So, you know, anytime you go to Rochester, that's going to be a tough one. And then uh, you got just a tremendous Manchester team coming right. up. Right. And then their conference opener, which will be another really tough game at LaVille next Friday. Right. Right. Yeah. LaVille looks to be probably the uh, top team in that Hoosier North. That's what a lot of people have been yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, they haven't gotten their season off to start yet. Right. I think they. they play tonight is that their first I think game? so yeah, yeah. yeah against Bremen yeah uh, but uh, you know with with uh, yeah Zarnecki and Plummer and uh, coach Edison's son I think is a freshman I think they'll be they'll be really good yeah what about uh, girls uh, uh, the good Michael good is that his name he plays for LaBelle also yeah he's a very good player yeah huh. literally yeah the uh, the Winnemac girls I mean what can you say about the job coach Stasiak has done with these girls six and three they only won four games all of last season and six and three after nine games, and they got a uh, a big win versus West Central, fifty two thirty two against the you know their their record isn't that great, but it's a not a bad West Central team, right? They got you know Annika Smith and um, you know yeah not a bad team. I mean it was thirty two twenty six after three quarters, and Winnemac outscored them twenty to six in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about you know same thing about Winnemac against Rochester. I mean, they pulled away in the fourth quarter. I think outscored Rochester was at what, thirteen to seven. Mm-hmm. This is a good fourth quarter team, and that's another sign that this team is their depth is having is giving teams problems. Mm-hmm. Their pressure is giving teams problems. Uh, their scoring average, I think, it was what their scoring average was around like about thirty four a game last year. I think they're up to around forty eight a game this year. Yeah, I mean they're they're just. They're just doing everything better, I and mean, then, you know, you know Maggie Smith um, wasn't a huge factor in the Rochester game. Then she scores twenty against West Central. Wow, which I think is a career high for Maggie. Yeah, and then Marissa Iverson, who was kind of in foul trouble most of the Rochester game, she scores twelve against West Central. And boy, has she raised her her game, and now that gives you another kind of post presence to go with Link. Yeah, I mean they're 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 a hard team to guard because if you if you say well we're not going to let Popejoy beat us or we're not going to let uh, Candace Croft beat us. Well, then you know Smith or Iverson might. Yeah. Um, or, or Link will, you know, and Link can get hers in the post as well. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they, you know, they bring in a Kaylin O'Connor off the bench who can score in the post. So they bring in a Corinne Ulrich who, you know, she I know she's been scoring well on the JV. You know, she can apparently she can hit threes and now. she can hit threes. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, boy, I really like this Winnipeg team. I this isn't a fluke. Yeah. I mean, they're 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 playing really well. Tough, tough test for them though tonight. They go two nine and zero Rensselaer Ooh, Central. That is, this might be the toughest game on Winnemac's schedule. Yeah, Rensselaer's playing great basketball. Won that big holiday tournament and La- the big Lafayette holiday tournament. They have the week before Thanksgiving every year. Beat West Lafayette in the championship game, and that you know, I mean, 
that tournament that's, that's a really good West Lafayette team. Right. I mean that yeah. and that tournament every year is kind of like, okay, who's good in who's good in the Lafayette area every year? I mean Twin Lakes is in that tournament, Benton Central's in that tournament. Yeah. Uh Mc, that's McC- a statement. McCutcheon is in that I mean yeah. that's that's a big tournament every year. So for Rensselaer to win that, that's a big statement for them. Mm-hmm. Uh that three A sectional they're in is gonna be crazy tough. But yeah, yeah right now Rensselaer is playing great. I mean they're you know they they're going to get after it defensively but they can also score in the, I think they can also score in the inside they get some size too. Yeah. McCutcheon probably has a uh, future miss basketball on their team mm-hmm. in Lily Graves so yeah there there's a lot of really good teams around that area yeah. so So yeah, curious to see how Winnemag does uh with Rensselaer and then uh you know then they go to Laville which is always a tough place to play. Uh, it's part of that the front end of the girls boys double header. I think Laville though had some graduation losses, so yeah. you have to say Winnemac would be probably favored in that game. So it's yeah, but you talk. I mean, you talk about weird, tough places to play. Winnemac or uh, Laville is is one of those. I yeah, mean, I don't know how many times I, I remember going up there with with uh, Macy and, and the Argus girls, and you know, barely getting a win or not getting a win, or you know, mm-hmm. it's just just crazy how. I don't know why. Right. I don't know why. It's not like it's, you know, Manchester. I can see with the old, you know, with the bleachers on the end and the old stage and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. I just don't get it. But right. it is. And then the night after they play Laville, then they play Demont Christian, a sneaky good Demont Christian team. Mm-hmm. And then Valley at home. So sure. you know that'll be tough. Right. But I think get. But I think that will toughen them up, and then they get to the Kitchen Classic. Mm. Who's to say Winnipeg won't be favored to win that whole tournament? Yeah. Yeah, Delphi's doing pretty good. Delphi's but, uh, having a nice year, but I think yeah, Winnemac could. I mean, Winnemac won't be. They shouldn't be scared of anybody in that tournament. Yeah, you know, Pioneer won it last year, but I think Winnemac will be in the contention this year. Yeah, so yeah, a good year for the uh, girls, and uh, they got uh, a lot of bright uh, nights ahead of them mm-hmm. as far as the uh, rest of the season goes. So, yeah. all right, uh, what else? Anything else? Get well wishes to Rochester football coach Ron Schaefer. Had a hip replacement surgery the other day. Oh wow! Uh, we'd heard about that, and then he kind of, he said he said it on Facebook. So I think I don't think we're yeah we're letting out any any secrets out of the bag. So hopefully he'll he'll be good. Yeah. Uh, second hip replacement. Oh, is it? Yeah. So yeah. hopefully he'll be good. And congratulations to Pete Smith, 1979 Rochester grad. And he was voted into the Indiana, Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, earlier this week. Uh, I had a chance to talk to Pete, and I'll, I'll be writing up, hopefully write that up, conversation up. But Pete's a guy who is, you know, I mean, he, he knows his roots, and he taught, you know, he, he you know, he, he has not forgotten where he's from, believe me. I mean, mm-hmm. he he talked about what it was like growing up in Rochester in the 1970s and what that was like for him and meeting a Phil McCarter who just had such a huge impact on his life as a teacher, as a coach. Um and of course, I think you know Randy. Randy Wynn and I talked about this last night. There, you know, you talk about six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Mm. You know, he, he, it's kind of six degrees of Pete Smith. I mean, he knows everybody. He's connected to everybody in a in a, in a very close way, whether they're in Rochester or whether or they're you look know, big picture. I mean, he he coached you know Tom Coverdale, Josh McRoberts. He did the five star camp. I mean, his roommate was John Calipari. Hmm. At the five star camp, I mean, really? he's, I mean, he's, he knows everybody, and you know, uh, he, and I mean, he he went from, um, you know, he I mean, he was twenty three years old as an assistant coach when Warsaw won state in nineteen eighty four, and then he he developed this long head coaching resume himself. So it's an amazing basketball life, and it's it's going to reach its its pinnacle when he gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Well, and and you you talk about like family trees or coaching trees or whatever, and then so if you go back, you know, obviously you mentioned Phil McCarter, and you go back to his coaching days. I mean, that takes right. you back to the early early days of you know Indiana basketball, right? And, yeah, right. And what I didn't know about Phil McCarter is he was a great teacher as well. He mm-hmm. was a business teacher, and he inspired Pete Smith to get into teaching. And Pete taught accounting for a long time. In the Penn and the Carmel uh, schools. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, what? I, yeah, okay. you're gonna have to read the story. If we give away show. too much, if we, if we give away too much, you wouldn't read the story. But it's yeah. it's an amazing story. Yeah. And uh, congratulations to Pete. Yeah. 
As always, great work, Val. Uh, you know, you can catch uh, Val's writing on the blog, rtc4sports.com, or you can go to rtc4.com and get that. Uh, you can also get his work in the Rochester Sentinel, the Shopping Guide News, does commentary with Randy on WROI as well, plus our weekly talking sports show. So we keep Val pretty busy. They keep us locked in the basement for a reason, I guess. So. <laughs> Well, we're going to wrap it up here for another week. We'll come back and uh, do some more sports with talking sports with Val next Thursday, as we'll be uh, we'll be doing Thursdays for the month of December. So, thanks, Val. Thanks, everybody.